Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today is a very special episode of Splat from the Past because after a long time trying, I am finally getting an original Mouseketeer from the Mickey Mouse Club on today. And of course, I'm talking about Sharon Baird. And I am so friggin' excited because I grew up in the late 80s watching the Mickey Mouse Club on VHS. And I just absolutely loved it. I never liked the, the incarnation from my generation, but I've always loved the original with Annette Funicello and Monty Burr and Tommy Cole and all of them. I just <clears throat> think it was just a magical time in Disney's history right when Disneyland had started. And so I'm having Sharon on the podcast today, thanks to frequent guest and friend, Lori Jacobson. So, uh, yeah, here is my interview with Sharon Baird. Hi, Sharon. This is uh, Tommy calling to do the podcast interview. Yes, sorry about that. Got a little confused on the phone. Oh, (laughs) that's okay. We've we've connected now. Yes. So, how are you today? Uh, So far, so good. How about yourself? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Uh, I have an allergy problem, so if it sounds like I'm dying, I'm not. (laughs) <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I've, I'm, uh, I'm in the early stages of a cold myself that I caught this weekend. Okay. So, <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. so we are in sync. <laughs> okay, very good, very good. It's, um, it's such an honor, and I thank you for taking the time today. Um, yeah, as a kid growing up watching uh, the Mickey Mouse Club on VHS in the late '80s, this is just. Uh, a magical thing for me, and I'm lucky to have a, f- a friend like Lori Jacobson who could connect us. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm happy to do that. Ah, oh, thank you. So, going back in time, I was reading that you started uh, dancing at the age of three. Uh, what drew you to mm-hmm. dancing? <clears throat> I guess I was born with the light switch on. <clears throat> My parents would go uh, square dancing. Mm-hmm. At night, and I'd, I'd want to go too, and they said um, I was too little to do that. And I said, little people can dance too, so they shut me up, <laughs> so I'd stay with the babysitter. They took me to a dancing school in our neighborhood, mm-hmm. and when I went in, <clears throat> the class had been working all year for the recital, and so she said, you can sit and watch uh, the recitals in six weeks. Um, and then you can start. So I was sitting there patting my foot. She said, you want to get up and try? Well, I got up and did it, and I was in the recital six weeks later. Wow. So nobody in your family were dancers? No. My dad was one of ten kids, and he loved he loved music. Like when the song in the mood would come on, he'd grab someone and just spin in circles all around the dance floor. But no one was trained. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you you won um, Little Miss Washington at age five. That's amazing. Yeah, I was born in Seattle, and that's where I started dancing. Um, won <clears throat> Little Miss Washington State, and went to um, California to compete for Little Miss USA, and I came in runner up. And my dad liked the L.A. area because there was sunshine. In Seattle, there was too much rain and <clears throat> dampness, so we moved to um, California. Wow. Yeah, my father, he lives in Marysville, Washington. Nice area. It's beautiful. But it doesn't, isn't it raining all the time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people up there go out in the rain without umbrellas or raincoats. They're just used to it. Yeah, lots of rain over there. Yeah. I, I, I go, I, whenever I go there, I look forward to seeing my dad, but I don't look forward to seeing the rain. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. So then um, you started dancing on the, the Colgate Comedy Hour? Yes, yes. Eddie Cantor uh, signed me 
under contract. My dancing teacher sent me out on a call. Um, he asked me if I wanted to dance on TV. They wanted two little girls and two little boys to do this little bit on the show, and I was too short, but they liked my dancing, so they <laughs> wrote a part in for me. And <clears throat> after it aired, Eddie Cantor's attorney called my folks and said he wanted to sign me under contract. So I was under contract to him and appeared on the Cool Get Comedy Hour when he was on. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you didn't get to see uh, Martin and Lewis when they were on there. I did a film with Martin and Lewis later on. Oh, yes, Art- Artists and Models. Yeah, yeah. But on the Cool Get Comedy Hour, uh, there were like four or five different stars that rotated as star of the <clears throat> week. So, I mean, the month. So, anyway, um, when Eddie Cantor was on, I would appear on his show. And he insured my legs for $50,000 with Lloyd's of London. <laughs> <laughs> and um, th- so that does that... So is that what led to um, you b- being cast in Artists of the Models? No, no. Um, let's see. How did I get cast in Artists and Models? Uh, you know, I don't remember. I know I was doing Artists and Models when I went out uh, <coughs> to, for the Mickey Mouse Club, but um, I don't remember. <laughs> I think I oh I think um hmm. I don't know, I think that they called my agent and asked for me. I know when I did um Bloodhounds of Broadway it was um Eddie Cantor's um friend who uh sent me out on the audition and um Eddie Cantor lied about my age. He said I was a year younger than I was. My parents <laughs> always told me to tell the truth. And um, I just figured whoever was with me, I would say that age. And when they asked me how old I was, they were all there. And so I told them I didn't know how old I was. <laughs> and uh, I guess that helped. I don't know, because I got the part. But um, I don't remember about um, artists and models. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think that's one of, the, of Martin and Lewis's most underrated movies, and it's actually Shirley MacLaine's first movie. Uh, well, actually, Lonnie Burr, who became a Musketeer, mm-hmm. and I danced a lot with him through the years, and then they both were in that sing with me. Oh. So we worked together before the Mickey Mouse Club. Wow, so you and Lottie Burr were both in that movie. Uh-huh. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know he was in that. <laughs> uh-huh. And Nancy Abate. Oh, uh, Lonnie worked with me on um, the Eddie Cantor show. Mm-hmm. Wow, so you work so you had a history with him when you both got on the Mickey Mouse Club. Right. Right. And how and how did you get on that show? The Mickey Mouse Club? Yeah. I was doing um Artists and Models with Keith Martin and Jerry Lewis, and in those days you went to Capitol Records to pre record um the songs that you do in the film. And when I was there recording, Jimmy Dodd, who was the leader of the Mickey Mouse Club, and he wrote most of the songs we did on the show, he and his wife, Ruth, um, he was there doing a recording session and saw me and recommended me to Disney Studios. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Wow. So my agent didn't want me to do it. Um, because she didn't want to tie me down. Um, but I wanted to. And shortly after I signed with Disney, um, RKO was going to do the life story of Shirley Temple, and they called her to see if I was available 
to do it, and uh, I wasn't. So I'm still glad I took it, you know? Oh, of course. I mean, uh-huh. <laughs> look how great we're it is. All like, we're all like a family to this day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you, you. I mean, you all had camaraderie on that show. I mean, it's only natural that you are all still friends to this day. Yeah, because we spent more time together during those years than we did with our own family. Because we went to school together on the set too, you know. Mm-hmm. Now, I had heard that the show happened because Walt Disney owed a favor to, to ABC because they helped finance Disneyland. We do. We opened Disneyland um, before our show aired. We were already filming, but um, we didn't know if the show was going to be a hit or not, but we were there opening day. In fact, um, four of us were at Disneyland just a few weeks ago. Uh, The D23 convention was there. And the night before, they had a function called Fifty uh, Fivers, mm-hmm. and they had people there who had been at Disneyland the day it opened. And <clears throat> we kicked it off with a panel discussion, and there was a Tommy. Uh, we had a Tommy, too. <laughs> uh, Bobby, Sherry, and myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Where, where was the show taped at? Uh, Disney Studios in Burbank. Oh, okay. It wasn't taped. It wasn't taped at Disneyland. No, uh, but we did do one year. We did a a circus at uh, Disneyland for it was about six weeks, and they took our little red trailers that we went to school in out there. So in the mornings, we got to go into Disneyland when nobody was there and warm up the rides and. Um, that was really a thrill. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine that'd be a lot of fun. Uh-huh. What What did you think about um, Walt Disney as a person? Uh, well, <clears throat> we still call him Mr. Disney to this day, because back in the day, <clears throat> that's what you did with adults. Uh, Walt Disney wanted us to call him Uncle Walt, mm-hmm. but we respected him too much and he's still Mr. Disney but I go along with he calls himself an Imagineer Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what he was and he said some oh some wonderful sayings uh, like may we never forget that it all started with a little mouse you know he uh, yeah He just um, had a way with words, and uh, he was very family-oriented. He knew everyone at the studio on a first-name basis. Um, I know <clears throat> he actually selected Annette. Mm-hmm. She was the only one he selected. Um, she was appearing at a dance studio recital in, uh, I think it was North Hollywood, <clears throat> and she was dancing Swan Lake, and um, he saw her there and <clears throat> uh, picked her out. She came in a little bit after we had started rehearsing. Mm-hmm. Oh, another one of my favorite Walt Disney saying, especially <laughs> at my age, imagination <laughs> has no age. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That that's a great yeah. saying. That's that's a timeless saying. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of kids are that way, I think. Mhm. There, there there was about um, what thirty six Musketeers overall, but only nine of you were there all three years. Right. I think there were seven of us all three years. Maybe there were nine. Mm-hmm. Was it a was it a pressure filled set? <laughs> Not the very first day, we, <laughs> first few days, 
they let the mothers in on the set. <clears throat> and after the third day, <laughs> the mothers were banned from coming on the set. They sent them to the lobby of the theater where they did the editing and stuff. And the mothers would crochet or play cards in the lobby while we worked because they had to be on the watch. Because the mothers were getting in the way of you know, trying to get their kids to smile and do things while they were filming. So um, they got banned. Pressure wise, we, love the, we all kind of we were like a family. We'd help each other learn the dances, and um, I didn't feel any pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you all came from um, the background of dancing, but uh, did you all have to like l learn how to act? Mm, Walt Disney wanted us to be ourselves, like real kids with their own personalities. They didn't want uh, someone who was trained in that manner. Mm -hmm. You just keep it natural. Right. He wanted to be like the kids next door. He took one of the um, producers, I've been told, on a ride to see, just pick out a kid like that or a kid like that. You know, he just wanted it to be like the neighborhood kids. <laughs> that, was the money good? Not so much. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, I think. Um, Disney's kind of noted for that back in the day, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we had residuals for a while. We had um, every every six months, they had an option that they could pick you up or drop it. <laughs> um, but we had residuals for a short time, and then it's... <clears throat> went by the wayside. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would even think, you know, back then that it would be good money because you look nowadays, you know, a lot of, a lot of um, entertainment jobs are not good money nowadays. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it wasn't mega bucks. <laughs> Did you did you have it in your contracts to um, make appearances at Disneyland and everywhere else for publicity? Oh yeah, uh huh. Yeah, we did, and actually um, making appearances. Uh, our contract with Disney is through perpetuity. Is that what it's called? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, which means it could be on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> so anyway <laughs> I've heard um, various stories that um, this masketeer had a crush on that masketeer and this one had a crush on that one but I was curious which one did you have a crush on oh, <laughs> um, I had a crush on uh, Tommy Kirk was Tommy Kirk he a masketeer? masketeer? He was on oh. material. That's another Tommy we had. <laughs> you had two Tommies. <laughs> yeah. Um, but those little crushes got over with right after the beginning, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Annette and Lonnie had a, a little relationship in their teens when we were a little older mm -hmm. for a while. Well, what was uh, Jimmy Dodd like? Oh, Jimmy Dodd <laughs> was the most wonderful human being. Uh, I think he's partially, quite a bit, uh, credited for to show being a success. Not only did he write the music, but the way he handled the show he didn't talk down to anybody. He um, he was just a, a wonderful man. You learn through experience, you know, and being with him, mm -hmm. spending time with him. How about Roy Williams? <laughs> he was Uncle Roy. <laughs> we, now we called him Uncle. <laughs> yeah. he, he was a, he was a, a goofball. He he was fun. He used to um 
have us take a piece of charcoal and scribble it on a easel, and he'd whip it into a um, picture. Mm-hmm. And he'd also he'd also do the um, the board where they draw what, what you're going to do each um, show, and he you know, like draw a picture <laughs> of Bobby and me dancing with smoke and dust all around it. Um, he was just fun. Mm-hmm. People, I think, forget that uh, Mickey Rooney's sons were on there for a while. Yes, they were, both of them. Mm-hmm. Well, I wanted to tell you that Roy was with Walt Disney from the very beginning when Walt Disney started in a garage in Burbank. Huh. Was he was an artist for, for um, Walt Disney. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Now, so he was family-oriented, you know? Mm-hmm, family-oriented. Right. Very loyal. Yes. Now, you now you were uh, best friends with Annette. Yes. Yeah, she... When, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, when she came in um, the first day, I remember her coming in. She's very quiet and shy, and she sat in the desk behind me. We had little red trailers that had a row of desks on each side, and she sat behind me, and we just became friends immediately. Yeah. She, she made that show so popular, though. Was was there any jealousy from the others? Well, that's the lovely thing about that she was not only America's sweetheart with the boys, the girls loved her, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she was she was prettier inside than outside. Yeah. She you know, it's, it she took, you know, when she got um MS, she took that horrible disease and she turned it into a positive gift. She did. She said to me instead of saying why me, she said to me why not me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um and I remember that night she told me that she had that it was after I told her I was moving to Reno and um, after I moved to Reno she came to visit me three times because we knew she wouldn't be able to after a while and I promised her that I would always come and see her after that which I did <laughs> oh yeah, yeah when, when, when she passed away Somebody posted this cute picture of uh, Mickey Mouse mourning her star on the Walk of Fame. Ah, uh, yeah, I was there when she passed away. Uh, um, but uh, it, here's a nice story: when she came to visit me, and I picked her up at the airport, mm-hmm. driving home, and there's a street called Sharon Way, mm-hmm. which I turned on to. And she said to me, oh, my gosh, you've only lived here six months, and they've already named a street after you. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh-huh. So, so, after the show, yeah. so after the show ended, you finished school, and then um, in 1964, you married Dalton Lee Thomas, and you formed a trio called Two Cats and a Mouse. Yeah, you've done your homework, huh? <laughs> yeah. I do lots of thorough research. Ah, <laughs> yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. What, <laughs> what kind of music did you play? Uh, oh, music for the clubs, and we had little sketches that we did. Um, we played piano and sang. He played trombone. That was my ex-husband. And um, we had another guy, David Berry who sang with us, and um, we played Vegas, and um, I think we, maybe two years, and Mm -hmm. then uh, we split up. Mm -hmm. Did you sing at all? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yes. Nice. Uh, uh, How did did you get into uh, puppetry? 
<laughs> well, I guess word of mouth. I was working at Blue Cross as a secretary because uh, when I was married, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the phone rang one day and it was Sid Croft. And he said, your name has been given to me and I'm looking for short people um, who can wear costumes and, and move. So I went in and met him. And it was uh, puff and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they gave me some girl roles. And then they started adding male <laughs> roles of swinging from the trees and banging at the walls. And um, I didn't get as many glamour roles after that. I got roles like Stupid Bat, Funky Rat, Raunchy Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, HR Puff and stuff. Fifty years later, it's it's still a major phenomenon. I think maybe um, the legalization of marijuana may have something to do with it. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I think. Well, here's something. I'm going to uh, go to the uh, the Amazicon mm -hmm. in November, November fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth in the. Essington, Pennsylvania, which is outside Philadelphia, for a um, kind of like a Sid and Marty Croft deal. Yeah. It's going to be with H.R. Pep and stuff and Land of the Lost Gang. And at the end of the convention for a photo op, <laughs> I'm going to wear the original Shirley Pep and stuff costume for pictures with the fans. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, lo I, lo I love it that um, a lot of people at conventions now, they're doing those photo ops wearing costumes from uh, whatever show or movie they did like years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, the guy who's putting it on, he bought the costume at, um, at, at Cross Factory and called me ask if I'd wear it. So that'll be interesting, huh? All these years later. Yeah. <laughs> Sid, Sid and Marty Croft are, are such geniuses. You look back at their shows back then and other shows that were on at the time, that their shows looked like they were shot for like public access instead of a major network. <laughs> I know. I did quite a few of them. Yeah, you I did. Was, I did treatment in the Sea Monsters and Sid and Marty and Land of the Lost and Woodsville, Bay City Rollers. Yeah, Land of the Lost is, is 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 even more popular now than ever. I've seen, you know, Wes and, and Kathy and Phil. They're doing a lot of conventions this year. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I had Wes I had Wes on the podcast uh, several months ago and stuff. He t he told me he was embarrassed to do a cameo in that Will Ferrell remake. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm telling you that too. I saw the three of them. <clears throat> Last um, November, when we went to Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and they had a um, Land of the Lost convention. They even brought in the flea stacks, too. And they brought in Joe Jamalta and me as the Pacunis. And uh, we had a good time. Well, actually, did you know that Kathy lives in Reno, too? I didn't know that. Oh, no, I didn't. So I went to the convention. Yeah. Yeah, I reached out to uh, Kathy a couple of times. Uh, she hasn't responded back, but uh, we're Facebook friends. Uh huh. You were you were in Ralph Bakshi's The Lord of the Rings uh, cartoon movie. Yeah, I was one of the first Rotos. Yeah, it was rotoscope. Well, we called it photoscope. <laughs> 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 we shot it in um, Spain. Mm -hmm. We were there for three weeks, and we all wore solid white. We had white wigs and white so they could uh, animate over us. Mm -hmm. Was that a long, grueling process? Um, I remember it was a long, <laughs> grueling process to get there because I had worked um, on another TV show that night and then had to fly to Spain. But um, 
No, we were in a little town two hours outside of Madrid called Monto del Cuervo. Mm -hmm. And um, they hired the local, some of the local people, the local men to be extras, and they come out in the early mornings with their stuff called the, the ghetto, that leather bag that had wine in it that they'd sit through all day long. Mm -hmm. they do that early in the morning. When, when Peter Jackson's um, movie trilogy came out, did you say to yourself, oh, my God, I was in the, the original cartoon, but no one saw it, but everyone's seeing these? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just amazing how that trilogy just became hugely successful. Now comes the notorious Rat Boy. How on earth did you get involved with this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I went from a girl mouse to a rat boy, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, someone told, I was working with um, the um, Disney Channel mm -hmm. on, um, let's see, was it Welcome to Pooh Corner or Dumbo Circus? I remember Dumbo Circus. Um, I think it might have been uh, Dumbo Circus, yeah. And Sandra Lott called. Someone had given her my name mm -hmm. and knew that I had worked uh, animal costume work. So she had me go in uh, and cast with um, Rick Baker, who does, oh, yeah. did the uh, cost, uh, facial <clears throat> mask. And um, I tested, and another guy tested, and I got the part. Wow, until the internet came, I thought that was a little boy playing rap boy. <laughs> well, that's good. That's why they didn't put, uh, use my name, Sharon Baird. Sandra Watt put F. Baird in the credits because she didn't want anyone to know there was a girl playing the role. Yeah, this, this movie is such an enigma, like... You know, I, I imagine, you know, Sandra Locke was trying to um, make a social commentary with this movie about being different, but I think the studio just kind of, you know, didn't believe in it. it I agree with you. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was right at the end of um, her relationship with Clint Eastwood. Did he ever visit the set? Yes, he did. Um, I'll tell you, when Annette visited the set, too. Uh, Clint Eastwood, um, <clears throat> you know, with his soft-spoken voice, mm -hmm. and he's standing there in my lovely <laughs> rat boy regalia, and this voice behind me would say, is your dance card filled? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> when Annette came to see me, um, have you seen what rat boy look like? <laughs> Have you seen what Rat Boy looked like? The, the, so I had to go to London to get um, contact lenses made, special ones. Mm -hmm. It made my whole eyeball black. So I had those on and all my makeup when Annette came in. <laughs> when she walked up to me, she stopped and stood still and started backing up. <laughs> <laughs> I she was scared of you. <laughs> moment with that. We were shooting in downtown LA in a dive bar. Early in the morning they kicked out some guys so they could shoot. And this one drunk comes up to me. I'm in this rat boy outfit. Comes up to me and says, Man, I haven't seen you in years. <laughs> Oh my God, that's so funny. Uh -huh. <laughs> the the movie has the crew up. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the movie has a great cast though. Uh, Christopher Hewitt, who played Mr. Belvedere. Yes. Uh, Louis Anderson, Garrett Graham, Robert Townsend, Larry Hankin. Robert Hankin. Townsend, yeah. 
Yeah, those are all great. Great. John, um, oh, the comic, John Lovitz. Oh, yeah. He was in it, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, guy, he is hilarious, John Lovitz. Uh-huh. He, he he just he could make the most just subtle thing he could say the most subtle thing and it's hilarious. Uh huh. He just throws it away. Uh huh. Yeah. So what so what are you doing these days? <clears throat> well, mouth to in it. Mm-hmm. I do I do which we do frequently. I do, starting to do the conventions, and I I live in Reno. I work at a beauty salon. Oh. Huh? And I enjoy the beautiful blue skies of Reno. Where do you live? I live in Redding, California. Oh. I'm originally from San Francisco, uh, but I moved down here uh, to help my mom pay the rent. It's a little cheaper up here, but I'm trying to get to Los Angeles. Uh-huh. But... Um, Wow, so so you work so you work at a beauty salon. Uh, do your customers know that you were a masketeer? Oh yes, yes, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, they do. I <laughs> that one who said I was asked the other day what my favorite Disney character is, and I say Sharon Baird. <laughs> <laughs> well, hmm. that's very good taste, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking. I was looking on IMDb.com. It says um, you were just in a movie called The Last Page of Summer. No. Oh, that was just uh, an IMD flubber. Okay. <laughs> no, not true. Oh God, I, I don't know where they come up with the stuff on that website. <laughs> mm. Mm-mm. No, and, uh, God, I don't know where they get it. Well, not everything that's there is true, you know? Oh, yeah. Especially since I started this podcast, I have found that out in many cases. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, you, you mentioned uh, you'll be at a convention in November. Do you have any other um, uh, convention appearances coming up? I certainly do. I have them. Um, this is a good one. Mm-hmm. Mouse, mouse con in Concord on November 3rd, which is totally a disney Anna show. Oh. You mean... Uh, Con- near you? Concord, California? Uh-huh. Ooh, I, I'm going to look into that. I'm definitely going to look into that. November 3rd. November 3rd. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the only one you have? I have one in January. I don't know too much about it. It's going to be in Reno. Mm-hmm. But um, it's next year, so it's not. I don't know too much about it yet. Okay. Wow. So November 3rd. I'm definitely going to look into that one. I, do, I never even heard of MouseCon. <laughs> <laughs> so is it going to be... So is it going to be all people who, like, have done things that have to do with mouses? <laughs> Disneyana show. I know the one in January. My best friend, do uh, you know Beverly Washburn? I know the name, yeah. She was the little girl in Old Yeller. Oh, okay. And I met her when she came to Disney Studios to do the film back when we were both 12. Mm-hmm. And uh, she came into the Little Fred trailer again to go to school. And we became good friends. We've been through marriages and divorces and She's a fabulous actress. She lives in Las Vegas, but she's going to come here for that convention in January. Nice. Wow. So many people in Las Vegas. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Bev has done a million things. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, well, Sharon, this was such an amazing honor. I thank you so much for coming on, and um, I'll I'll definitely look into uh, MouseCon, and maybe I'll go and and meet you. Oh, that would be great! I'd love it. I'd love it too, and stuff. Okay. 
Well, I hope your uh, your your cold um, uh, heals within days, and <laughs> and uh, God bless you, and I hope you have a great day. Okay, you too. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well, there you have it, Sharon Baird. Ain't she a sweetheart? Yes, she is. Great lady, fun lady, entertaining lady, has lots of great stories. And she loves playing mouses. <laughs> um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes. Why? Because we like you.